Welcome everybody to Raiders of the Lost Art episode 14, Mark Cook creating sculptures in sound. Now, Mark is an incredible musician. Obviously, he's uh, he's in three bands, Heard of Instinct, Nocturne, Blue, and Spoke of Shadows. Now, this whole series, Raiders of the Lost Art, is dedicated to the experimentalists, the new innovations in sound, technology, entrepreneurship, how art fuses with business, how music creates visuals, where is that next evolution of sound? And Mark is, and his band is, a group of people that are constantly sort of looking at how they create this aesthetic where it takes you deeper into the sound field. So I'm super wrapped to be talking to Mark today. Um, you know, he represents everything that I stand for, which is this sort of this this outlier attitude of just just really going deep into the music. Um, and so with that, you know, I earlier recorded a, an interview with him and Jim Wright talking about the war guitar. As you probably know, some of the people that uh, have been tuning in on this uh, this series so far. I play the war guitar, I've been learning it. Mark is an incredible player, same with Jim. And so we caught up to talk about the war guitar and all things creative. So let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you um, so much for having me. Yeah, look, Mark, it's so such an honor to have you, man. Like your, your catalog is amazing. Your music is so killer. I just love it. It's like right up my, my street. You know, it's sort of invokes so many different visuals for me. And for me, that's, the, that's what I, I like to compose. I like to music just takes me on a journey. So mate, congratulations on all your library and your work and, and, and your playing and your war guitar and everything. It's amazing. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's a real honor to, to be with the two of you. Yeah. Awesome. And Jim, like, how did you, did you meet Mark? Um, how did you guys connect in the first place? Uh, I just knew him through my association with war guitars. I had occasional communications with him. He greatly affected me by playing me some of his music and telling me that he had been moving pickups around in his war guitar. And I couldn't believe the sound he was getting. So I did the same thing with my own instruments and was just really thrilled with the results. And I, I'm not even sure if Mark realizes that... Uh, you know, Pete is now building his own pickups, and it's largely because Mark inspired me and I inspired Pete. Uh, I'll just say it's that direct communication that uh, the original choice to use the Bartolini's was a good choice. They're great pickups, uh, but they do tend to have more of a jazzy sound. And, and what I liked in Mark's recordings that I heard was he was able to get a much more guitar-like sound, which, of course, is close to my heart. And uh, it led me to play with the pickups in one of my guitars. And <clears throat> excuse me, when Pete uh, heard the sound I was getting and saw that I was really excited about this, he started looking into making his own pickups, which I have in my new guitar and you have in your guitar, Finbar, and I just love them. It's, it's a very different sound from the Bartolini's. I was just discussing it with uh, Randy, who was over here recently. Uh, he has one of the new guitars. And he was talking about how open the sound of the pickups is. And I think this can all be traced directly back to Mark. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's kind of humbling. <laughs> uh, I, I really, um, I, I, I was always drawn to a guitar sound. And so one of the things that I've always tried to do with the war guitar is to kind of eliminate the technique that you're using. So, um, Passive pickups really changed the dynamic of the instrument. And it was actually um, a cheap Raptor ward that I picked up for like a thousand bucks that really turned me on to how the, the passive versus active affects the sound. Uh -huh. um, but I've, I've used Seymour Duncan's in one of the phalanx that I have. Right. And it and it really um, brings out the dynamics of the guitar versus the Bartolini's. Even though I still use the Bartolini's all the time, um, I still sometimes record with passive pickups versus active. Interesting. So I I'm uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say that I used Carvins in mine because they had twenty-two pole pieces, so it was really easy to address. The string volume issues and get them to balance out very nice and i'm like you i as a matter of fact i think you might have been one of the first people to buy a phalanx model from mark right perhaps the first and right. uh, 
uh, uh, which is also a milestone right there. Uh, but like you, I was after more of a guitar tone. I think we're alike in that sense that I want my instrument to sound like guitar and bass. And I think that's what inspired me about hearing your recordings was that you were achieving that. Sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's, I find well, sometimes I find the, Right, right. I find the word guitar like it's it's a never ending challenge for as far as an instrument. I, I feel like I'm a beginner still, so it's it's a fascinating instrument. I think you actually inspired the phalanx because I was talking to Mark about a lot of the music that I wanted to record, I couldn't record with the crossed hand tuning. And, and he brought up, what if I built you an instrument that's using the tuning that, that Jim Wright's using? And so I was like, I, I like that idea. <laughs> and so we there's a cross pollination of influence here i think but um well I, I, look, I think i think that that's a really great interesting topic here because there's a lot of people that don't know what a war guitar is or are just coming into it and just like me i've you know i've been playing a year now um i have what's called a cross tuning which um because i i migrated from a stick even though i only learned it for a couple of months so i, I was lucky to get a war guitar pretty much straight away but it came with cross tuning which means that the 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 bass side is 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 set up where the thick strings in the middle and you play it outwards so one the bass hand is crossing over the fingerboard and your and your melody hands crossing over this way so it's very much more like a chapman stick but both jim and you mark um use uncrossed which is uh it's basically you've got your melody strings on the top of the fingerboard and your bass strings on the bottom of the fingerboard. And I think, Jimmy, you run all, all fourths tunings. Is that right on both your melody and bass? Uh, yeah, that's right. And Mark, is that what you use too, just fourths tuning, or do you use something else? Correct. I use fourths. I actually, I actually use both tunings for recording in certain situations, but normally when I play with a rock band, I use... Uh, the phalanx with the all fourths because um, it just functions better in a loud band setting. Um, I don't have to worry about interference between the two sides very much. Right. Do you still ever play crossed or do you just always play on cross now? I, I record with uh, cross tuning sometimes when I really want a kind of a Tony Levin, Trey Gunn, because the fifth tuning has those wide intervals that gives you this really nice kind of bass chordal thing. Um, and then also doing two hand on the melody side can give you, you know, you can sound like Alan Holdsworth really easily on a war guitar, yeah. um, both hands. Yeah. Um, but... So um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like there is so many combinations, and I, I love what you were saying there about the challenge. It's uh, it it is a uh, look for me. I, that's what I actually love about it is the challenge. It's like a puzzle. It's like a never ending sort of puzzle book. Uh, but at the same time, it's not to at least to me, it's not it's not so daunting that it's like a puzzle book that you just can't work out and you get frustrated with. You just keep finding doors to open and. You know, and I'm, my new instrument that Pete's building me is uncrossed, um, like what you guys have. So I'm going to have both instruments. I'm going to have a crossed and an uncrossed. Um, right. And, you know, that's why I asked that question. But I'm, I'm really excited to get the uncrossed. It's sort of, you know, it, it seems to make a lot more, it seems to be easier. It's so much more visually laid out like a, like a guitar and a bass in a way. Um, but, you know. Right. Um, 
w one of the things that and Jim probably knows this too, like with the cross tuning, you're 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 having your brain do two different motions with your left hand and with your right hand. It's two completely different motions. With the force tuning, everything's parallel, and and the way I tune my instrument is. I tune the bass like the B flat and the guitar to A, A flat, so it's like a, a whole step off. So everything I can do runs that are just a whole a whole step apart in unison that I could never attempt to play on a crossed hands tuning. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I've seen guys play the cross hands where they're they have a really active bass hand and and i'm always amazed <laughs> yeah yeah well it's um... and just to complete the story um i had first switched to fourths in the bass but still inverted and crossed and then bass players would come up to me at gigs and say that's really interesting how do you play the bass strings upside down and i would say well it's in fourth you can try it and they're like no i wouldn't have any i wouldn't know what to do and then it occurred to me well what happened if i pretended my guitar strings were bass strings and i played the guitar side as though it were bass and i thought this makes way too much sense you know and to mark's credit no matter what tuning anybody played he was always very open to their ideas because he knew that he didn't know everything. He was very smart that way. And so he kindly built me a guitar to check out the tuning. And I played it and immediately loved it. And I took it to him and I sat there and watched him play it for about 20 minutes. And then he, he put his head up and he looked at me and he said, okay, now we can spread out the bass strings and we can make a space between the two sides of the cross. He described the phalanx to me immediately right there. Like he had been thinking about this for a while and he just wanted to see if the tuning was viable. And so that's probably how, it was probably right after that that he spoke to you about, well, how about if I tune a guitar this way for you? Because I'm pretty sure you were the first person to buy a phalanx model from him. Huh, it was before I actually... It was before I actually started working at War Guitars, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was kind of a shock when it when the instrument arrived because the spacing was so different on the yeah. bass for the guitar, and so it took me it it took me a little while to get used to that, and then I also was having to turn my entire repertoire of the band that I was playing with. I was taking all that war guitar music tuned in fifths and fourths and transferring it to the phalanx. And it was really daunting at first, but as soon as, as the muscle memory kicked in where it, I felt it, then I realized I did the, I, d I made a great choice. And the people that I were playing with, they immediately said, you sound like a gu guitar player and bass player now, as opposed to, a really simplistic bass player with lots of guitar, um, so it was it was noticeable um, in a short period of time. Um, well, that's, that's I, exciting. That's exciting for me, guys, because I, here's here's me, and I, I feel like I'm just cracking the cross tuning now, and I'm and and so now I'm like, okay, I'm buying an instrument completely different. Uh, in a different tuning, and you know, Jim's like, you'll you'll love it. And hearing what you said, it's like you know, going through that I, journey. I, well, I think uh, you I mean, enjoy it. My opinion is that if you if you have any experience with a four string, six string bass, all of that technique can be immediately applied to that tuning. Uh, so I can't imagine why a bass player would want to go to a tapping instrument that had a different tuning unless they were looking for something to spur them creatively. Wouldn't you rather be able to just transfer all of your existing technique to the tap instrument and then be able to add guitar on top of it? It, it, it made sense to me. And, and for a few years, War was selling them because bass players would say, you mean I can have a six string bass that also has guitar and paizo and midi for less than six thousand dollars because bass players were used to spending eight thousand dollars for a boutique 
four string bass from one of the famous manufacturers. So for that reason, we sold a lot of them. Uh, uh, and it just made so much sense to me. I really love it. I, I, every day that I've owned a war guitar, no matter what tuning, I get inspired when I play it. It's, it's like you both said, it's just kind of endless that once you get into it, there are new things to learn every day and you feel like you're breaking new ground. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And, and there's, I love the fact that, that there's so many variations of the instrument. Um, and it's just, you know, a lot of the other tapping instruments are very consistent and they're the same, even sonically, they're the same. Um, but the war guitar, I have a few and they all sound slightly different to radically different, depending on the wood um and and the pickup combinations so, so mark what was your um did how did you first come across the war guitar like what was that journey like what did you see it and just go what the like t take us back there well i i was initially playing chapman stick for a few years and i was wanting to play in rock bands and um at the time the stick had one pickup option and one tuning option and i used to spend the entire gig with my foot on a volume pedal and because if i used too much gain it was it would get squealy and so um i guess i first heard about the war guitar through trade gun and um i looked up I guess I, on the internet or something and, and found um, a picture of it uh, or a hit of him playing it. And I was like, that has guitar pickups in it. And so I, that's how I tracked down Mark, I guess. I, I'm not exactly sure how I tracked him down, but um, when I started talking to him, he just immediately knew exactly what I was going for. So he, you know, um, he, ta he talked to me a long time about wood choices and combinations and, um, and that's when I realized that mahogany is like just one of the best sounding touch guitar um, woods to choose. Um, so it, 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 it exploded from there, actually, and I became fixated and for years, I didn't even touch another instrument like guitar, bass, or keyboard. I just focused on the war guitar. Like I said, it's it's just you never get tired of it, um, and you 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 try to do uh, different things to uh, to have the instrument be nuanced. So I know you came from a guitar background, or I think we all came from a guitar background, right? And you know the, the all the different um, attacks that you can do to a guitar with a whammy bar and the uh, the muting and so uh, when 
when I started playing war guitar, I started trying to figure out how to do all those nuances. So I, um, I bought like a whammy pedal and I realized that I could continually um, do little minor pitch shifts, like almost like David Torn or like a uh, Holdsworth do where they, they, they dip into a note and then they release the whammy bar. And, and so I, I learned how to do that with my foot. So that like when I'm playing with like a solo, I can, I can just very subtly move the note around. Um, and then I also started focusing on playing right on top of the fret to get like a muted sound. So to get that like muted heavy guitar sound, I would kind of play slightly on top of the fret. Um, so I, I spent a lot of times focusing on the attack of the instrument. Um, and what, what I learned is like when I went back to playing guitar for, you know, in the past few years, I've played guitar a little bit, um, how much I love the, the low tension of the strings. It, 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 it enables you to kind of like be a lot more subtle and, and not have to use so much force. Um, for guitar, it's a very difficult instrument for me to play, and so so is standard bass. It's very difficult. Yeah, well, I, I don't know about you, but like I, since I've got my wall guitar, you know, I've got walls of top end guitars, like custom ones that are built for me, and my own signature guitar and everything. I just don't even play them. It's like it, I, I actually don't even have any interest to play them. It's 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 the 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 right. the, the aspiration and the passion is like is like what you were saying, Mark. It's like okay you know and i'm just learning like i, I haven't even got the, the skills down yet you know but like but i'm already creating stuff and it's like i go what can i do with this and i'm just exploring and then things just appear before me you know and it's and it's just that's so rewarding to so to someone like when i pick up a guitar i would i would often change the strings around on my guitar and have and tune to ridiculous things that don't not even make sense to anyone purely because i didn't know what i was doing and it forced me to to listen more so than think about technique because I got so heavily into te technique and theory um, that I wanted to force myself out of that. And the war guitar, especially with cross tunings coming to it from a brand new instrument, had no idea what I was doing, which was actually so refreshing for me. Um, right. And to now go, okay, well now I'm going to go back to uncrossed and I, it, things make a bit more sense. It's, I don't know. I just, I, I just find it so, so amazing. And, and to you, to your point, the low tension, it's like I pick up a guitar, my, my action, I play a lot of eight finger stuff on guitar and it's like my actions are, right. all my guitars and my necks are all being sort of like plecked and everything's all super low and it's, but still it doesn't feel anything like a, like a, a long, the, the scale length of the, the war guitar. It's just, it's a different thing. And now that I'm getting used to that, I go on a, my guitars, which are set up like race cars. And even then they still don't feel, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, well, it is a different instrument, but you know, Right, right, and and but I I I really enjoy playing the guitar now for the things that you really that are difficult to play on a war guitar to a certain degree, but most of those things have to do with co certain chords and open strings and stuff. Um, but even with the war guitar, you can do, you know, with the with the crossed hand tuning, you can do a lot of really cool chordal stuff. Um, with the with the the high bass strings and the melody string that you can't do on any other instrument really. Mm. Yeah, well, it's um, it's it's amazing. And so, you know, I've I've been checking out some of your catalog. Man, your music is just so awesome. I just love it. It's just I think it's it's just I don't know. It's 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 sort of a cross pollination of a lot of the things that I, that. I like, but um, that instrumental, I don't hear many people doing instrumental music, like Jim's music is amazing too. It's just, I don't know, I, I just find this, um, the war guitar lends itself so beautifully to creating sonic textures and, and kaleidoscopes of sound that, you know, it's not, it's not so much, you can be a part of a, a band, which you are, obviously are, but also you can, you can sit down by yourself. I've got a, a bunch of nice gear in my studio and you can just sit here and just create these like, you talked about David Torn, you can create landscapes of sound of these and blooming like beautiful things where everything's got definition, but it's still got like, and it's just like, I just go, 
because I'm not a keyboard player, I'm a guitar player, but all of a sudden now I have the range of a keyboard and I've right. got the dynamics of a guitar, but I've got even more dynamics. And oh, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's very hard for me to explain it to people, but, but you know, because people just look at this instrument and go, well, you, I'm sure you guys have been doing this a lot longer than I have. It's like, you could just, I can just imagine some of the stories of the reactions that you've had. Like, Mark, you know, what, what sort of reactions do you have when you play live? It's usually shock, um, just, you know, because they're, even, even playing something simplistic is still pretty mind blowing to people. And, but, um, but like, like you were saying about the range, that was initially what excited me was that it had such a wide range and I could, I could just play a low note and a really high note and, and it's magical almost. Um, um, but yeah, playing live is, I've gotten some pretty sh strange reactions from people um, just because they're, they're, they just, you know, um, they don't know what it is. I've heard, is that an electric sitar? Um, is that a, you know, um, um, you know, they, they, they just get confused usually. But you start to recognize that look when somebody just comes up and stands in front of you <laughs> between you and the audience and just is right. And you, and you're like, okay, I'm going to have to explain this. And of course, that's what we've had to do all since we started on the stick even. And right. I've played for 40 years now, and I still have to explain at every show I do what I'm doing. Nobody knows what's going on because there aren't that many people that can do it. I also right. wanted to mention, Finbar, I can see how you would have an affinity for Mark's music because you both – have a really great sense of putting very nice visual stuff with your music. Mark, I, I really enjoyed the dancers that you had in almost all of the videos of yours that I watched. And the fact that you both have such, uh, what's the proper word, such evolved sense of, of what kind of video you want behind your music. And that, that seems to me to be an as important a part of at least promoting your yourself uh, I'm sure you must have seen part of Vin Finbar's The Code, Mark. I mean, it's just an incredible, right. it's right. an incredible awesome. accomplishment, just as your videos are, you know. I, I look like a caveman next to both of you guys. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, well, I, I've always... I'm always in the wanted... little studio with my Zappa, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's you guys pretty have amazing. these grand videos with these huge visions of the world, you know? <laughs> They're great. See, see, I I've think you always have a lot wanted, in common, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I, see, I've, I've, I've always wanted to make music like if Salvador Dali made music. So, you know, it's like just um, uh, for all the senses, you know? Uh, so I, 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 and I'm a very visual oriented person. So I, and that's that's where it comes from, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, I, Finbar, I, what, what, what? yeah. So for me, because my album's called the Code, and because what I did was I embedded all these different hidden codes in the music, like the Da Vinci Code. I've got you know from transcribing colors of camouflage to hex values back to rhythmic sequences to you know uh, to words the song to Morse code, all that sort of stuff that's all hidden in different tracks. I wanted to. One of the codes I wanted to use was I wanted to, instead of having a movie that has a soundtrack, I wanted to have a piece of audio that has a film track. So the film is a supporting material to the audio, but I didn't want to tell the story in the pictures. I wanted to create abstracts that let the sound create the story without me actually trying to invoke too much into what I was trying to say. What I was trying to do is let the sound, the frequencies, uh, the collision of stuff try and let everyone else make up their own mind what it means to them. But I wanted to do that by just laying some abstract sort of 3D um, with some some with some royalty stuff. But and so that for me was a code in itself is how do I how do I encompass this into a piece of engaging content that is driven by a piece of music, but the music doesn't have any definition. Right. It's it's you did an amazing job. Yeah well I love I love the like the fact that you you'll have like a detuned like eight string guitar with this like cool synthesizer. It's like, I haven't heard anybody use 
these that combination of sounds. So it's really cool. It's very really, really impressive. Well, you guys know it's just from experimenting, right? Like 99% of the experiments don't work. And the 1% that does is like you talked about the whammy pedal. You know, you have a vision of what you're trying to create, but you actually have no idea how to do it. And so you go and buy right. a pedal and then you play around with it. And, you know, something, you know, I've tried crazy things with ebos where I'm putting the Ebo across a steel bar like a capo to try and get the Ebo going across multiple strings at one time. Just, you know, whatever it is, just mucking around with things and, Occasionally you stumble up. I used to love Steve Stevens, you know, that whole toy gun thing that he did with a little toy oh. that he played to get those. I used to constantly think, how's he get those sounds? And, you know, it sort of made me realize that, you know, I really need to keep exploring and not just go be limited. And when I got the, onto the stick the first time, whilst I loved it, it was very limited to you have to do it this way. And, you know, when I first got the war guitar, even though it was like that, it sort of gave me a look. It, it opened the door a lot, and that's why you know when you talked about pickups, you know, how did you go about that, Mark? Did you just treat it as a guitar? Did you rip the pickups out and put your own ones in? Is that how it worked, or? I think um, initially it was it was the fate it was the first failings that I got, and when I first got it, it, it was uh, the body is swamp ash and the top is zebra and the neck is mostly a wood called wenge. I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, it was a super bright, super attacky instrument. And so um, I ended up, um, I love the bass sound because it was so aggressive, but at the same time, um, the guitar side was really weird for me. So I initially swapped the pickups out for, for uh, EMG 707s, which help kind of subdue the, the um, brightness. And I put in an, uh, an active EQ that actually boosted the mids and dropped the treble. And I used that for, for a while, but then eventually Seymour Duncan came out with these pickups that for seven string guitar, that were kind of mid gain. I really didn't want like heavy metal pickups. So um, uh, he released these mid gain kind of um, pickups that were like smoother. And then when I put those in to the phalanx with the Swamp Ash, it completely just evened out the tone. So it's just real smooth and warm sounding now. And it doesn't have the, the sizzle in the top. But, but it also has a lot of clarity because it, it, it was meant for, you know, a seven string guitar with, with a low tuning. Um, so it really helped. And then I, I also for years have used a Raptor, which is kind of like a minimal version of a war guitar. Um, Jim probably knows more about those instruments than I do. Actually, they're, they have like a single pickup. And mine is in like the middle position, so it's it's got a real warm singing um, tone to it, where it's got tons of sustain. It's still got clarity, but it's got a lot of warmth. And it's a passive instrument, so it really hits like effects very differently than an active instrument, especially fuzzes and overdrives. Um, they they react. Can you talk about that a bit? Because all of my instruments are active. I like the extra output in terms of driving effects. As you know, that was always a problem for me when I was playing a passive instrument was that it didn't drive the effects the way a guitar was because the output isn't as strong because you're not picking it, right? So if you wouldn't mind, tell me what your perception is of the difference between passive and active. Um. Actives are definitely smoother and um, more balanced, and the they passive. definitely no no the 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 actives have a a certain amount of compression to them that the that the passive pickups do not have, um, and they are definitely a lot more consistent and and more um, um, what's the proper way of saying it it's it's more an even response, I think, when with the technique of tapping. Like you said, you don't. It's more of a when it hits your effects. It's it's 
the dynamic range is very consistent. Um, so what I've done in the past is, um, is sometimes you can use a compressor in front of, of the, the drives and that, that helps a lot or even use a boost. Um, but again, I'm mainly recording with, um, the passive pickups versus playing live. When I play live, I usually use active. Yeah, Pete tried to get me, he tried to convince me to go uh, passive on my last guitar, and I just am too fond. And you're right, I think it is a little compressed. And I've even discovered situations where I had to turn down the active pickups a bit because I would go to an open mic or something, and you would plug into their PA, and it, it would just be hitting them like a ton of bricks, you know. Right. And so I thought maybe I need to turn this back a little bit, you know. Uh, it's interesting and, with it, uh, my, with my Axe FX three, I find that the the melody side of the war with my actives, it is so hot. Even if I turn it down to zero, because it's it's not really? it's not the 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 input gain on the Axe FX, it doesn't really turn it off. It's it's got its own input gain stage, and it's still hitting it mm -hmm. way too hard. Um, so I'd have to put some sort of buffer before it, but what, I just go straight in through my preamps into my console and, and then I, I merge through my DI, but, but yeah, it's sort of, um, I must admit, you know, I, 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 I much prefer passive pickups in all my guitars. They just, I use bare knuckles in most of my guitars. They just have this really open, I can have my seven or eight strings. I can hit a chord and I can hear every single string on them. Um, it's got this breath around it, this sort of space. Whereas every time I've used passive pickups, they, uh, sorry, active pickups, they, they have this clarity, but it's sort of, it's bunched together a bit more. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, seems, seems packaged <laughs> or uh, it's, it's a hard thing to explain, but you know, right. but clean, I, you know, I, I, I like the actives, the, the actives sound totally different. Right. Has, has war guitars ever thought about doing a passive active switch? I, I know that some bases have that, but I'm not sure how difficult that is for, uh, a four pickup instrument. <laughs> it must have been discussed at some point, but I can't tell you anything further about it. Uh, uh, I think Pete's just tired of doing all the soldering and maybe he wanted, he wanted me to just be able to hook up some pickups and go, I should ask him the next time he has one done, I should play it and see what I think of it. I know Daniel Shell also likes passive instruments, but just the first time I played a war, one of the things that really attracted me was the fact that it had a buffer. And, you know, it's essentially the same thing as if you go into a pedal, like a boss pedal, it has a buffer in it, too. So even if your pickup is passive, by the time it leaves that pedal, it's a buffered signal, basically, is my understanding. Uh, so uh, maybe we don't need them. But I I, now you're making me curious. I want to try it. The other thing I wanted to ask you is, are all of your instruments bolt-on necks? Uh, yes, I do have one uh, artist that's a neck through. Um, and it's a, it's, I think it's a later model. Um, but it's, it's, yeah. there's definitely a difference in the bolt-on and neck throughs in terms of, the attack. Um, the the neck throughs are a little slower. Um, the sustain is is really nice, um, but I do like. I think the bolt ons have the attack that I like. I'm in total agreement with you there. I mean, uh, anybody listening, I mean, if you listen to Trey, he's always neck through, and he has that really lovely soft attack to what he does but i'm like you i want it to sound like i plucked the string and for me i my i did own a phalanx and it was a neck through and it just had ridiculous sustain it was like 
playing a bass note was like holding a synthesizer key down you know it just Spinal there was no cat. decay to the, it just went on and on and on and on uh and i like the sound actually i did use it on one of the tunes on my last album that i released in 2016 so people could compare there but uh uh like you i i think i really prefer the 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 bolt-on sound because of the attack so guys for the uh, for the for the, the for the people at home that are maybe looking at a war guitar, I've had a few guys contact me about them. The Phalanx is the uncrossed, wider body, wider neck. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And then the Artist is a little is a narrower, narrower body, a little bit narrower neck. Is that is that correct? Am I saying that right? Yes. Yeah. And then, is there any other models beside those? Or well, as Mark mentioned, uh, Mark War did a couple of attempts at low cost models like the Raptor and the Austin Douglas guitar. And it was basically just, let me put out a basic instrument as an introductory level model. And uh, Pete claims that he has all of the templates for these. And if somebody wants one, he can build them. And they should be a simpler, quicker build depending on how busy we make Pete with all of the uh, attention that you're bringing to him. <laughs> well, I better not do too much because I will still want my instrument. <laughs> I, know, soon. I know you're going to screw yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited that they're going to be built again. Yeah. Um, you know, for so long, it's like, um, it, it, it seemed like potentially the war guitar was going to go extinct, you know, because, um, people couldn't get the instrument and, um, there's not a lot of players out there. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to spread word, um, and keep, keep that interest up. Yeah. Well, well, well that's what we're trying added, to do. That's what we're trying to do, bring this community together and look at, look, I, I, you know, it's, it's so great just to have you guys on, on this. Like, obviously I'm passionate about it. I, I've got a lot of people that like follow my guitar and all that sort of stuff. And it, it's like, this is a bit of a, now that I'm just on this journey, it's sort of, I'm getting a lot of questions. And for me, it's just being able to connect with this community, I like you guys and hear all your work and just get to chat with you. I think it's great also for, for the audience to know that, look, there's A, there's a really great competitive advantage if you can start to get into this. B, it's a lot of fun um, as a musician. It, it's, it's, it's very satisfying. Um, and you know, it's and there's people out there that you can connect with all across the world. Um, whilst there's not a lot of us, it's just, uh, you know, uh, for me, it's just, I just, I just, I just think it, everyone should know about it. I'm sure you feel the same. So it's sort of, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just really grateful that I can, I can connect with you guys and and be inspired to, as someone new to the instrument, just to be inspired by, you know, your greatness and just go, wow, this is so cool and you know, and, and just listen to your music and, and just know that there are no bounds, you know? Well, and we're grateful for the attention we've been, I, I mean, I always, you know, uh, talk about how uh, uh, we all started on the stick and stick players tend to be conformists, whereas war players are all different. I mean, uh, you know, I, I hope we can get some other players on that are eight string players. I mean, everybody's got their own tuning. We just talked to Brian. He's got a four seven tuning. Mark is more in line with what I'm doing. You, Fidbar, are playing both tuning. Randy Strom is more of a traditionalist in his tuning and wonderful at it. Uh, they're all the war players are so unique and individual. So it's just wonderful that you're showing the world how different they all are and. And I think that's an advantage. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, and I think you're the next one that's going to blow everybody away. I mean, I, I right. can't believe the progress I've seen you make in just a couple of months. So oh. watching watching the, the knowledge you already have about guitar and music, when when you finally get comfortable on an instrument, you're, you're already tremendous, but when, you're going to take it to a whole new level, I think. Oh. Right. I was, I was totally blown away watching your videos playing war guitar because I was like, wow, I, you, you're great. And you're already great. So it, yeah, I can't imagine. 
I don't five know that. Well, that's, a lot of that's thankful to, the, to that man there, Jim. You know, he's uh, he's yeah. he's been uh, every week. I have lessons without fail, and I'm practicing every single week. Uh, so it's sort of, but that's that's because I just love it. It's not because I I, want, I have to do it. It's just you know, just probably like well, all of you guys, you just keep going. You know, it's when the work guitar gets attached to a huge brain like either of you guys that the sparks fly. Well, you know, my, my biggest problem is I bought a PlayStation 5 and it's just not getting used. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. And um, I have look, Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I, I know it's a problem when I turn Netflix on and I've seen everything. It's like, you know what? Maybe that's some metadata that I need to sort of process and, and realize that I should be actually practicing more. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, look, guys, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, Mark. Uh, amazing as always, buddy. Um, is there anywhere we c where people can find your stuff? Um, uh, what herd of instinct? Do you, what's your main band at the moment? I know you, you've got a couple of projects on the go. Uh, herd of instinct's my main uh, prog rock band, and um, then I play uh, in a band called Nocturne Blue that is like down tempo art rock dream pop. And it's really a project uh, run by a great musician named Dutch Raw. Um, let's see, I, I work sometimes with a psychedelic band called Liquid Sound Company. And we just released a new album called Psychoactive Songs for the Soul. I'm not sure where that came from, um, but it, it's potentially the first psychedelic war guitar album uh because i'm not sh because the main guy in the band named john perez he really is going for that 60s you know sid barrett pink floyd stuff and um the majority of the album was recorded um lots of fuzzy guitars and then war guitar mainly playing bass and doing low-end doubling on the guitar and some minor lead stuff. Um, and then I'm, I'm working on an album um, with a guy named Gail Ellett, who plays in a band called Jean Carré. Um, Jim, are you familiar with them? I, I get your videos in my feed a lot. I think I must have subscribed or something. So yeah. Right. They, they've been around for like 20 years and released like 20 albums and Gail's the main guy in that band and we're currently working on like a, a power trio album kind of thing okay. but a mainly bass guitar on that so which is weird I've never played bass guitar on an album um, and are but, you finding but, I should point out that every other guest we've had so far has been a Californian Mark is our first Texan that we've had on here. Right. Are you finding, do you have venues down there where you can go out and play this kind of music? Um, yes, but I'm afraid that Texas has become the tribute band of the world. So we have a tribute band for every band that's existed from 1965 to, <laughs> you know, there's, and it's, and they really do suck up the market because wow they have why, why don't you do a herd of instinct tribute band right <laughs> <laughs> well, well still out, here be <laughs> out here it's bands that represent a decade you know the 80s or the 90s or the 70s okay. right? yeah see they have whole showcases here where they'll have a dio cover band and ozzy osbourne a queensryche a jackal like uh, Phil Collins, like it's just like a whole showcase of nothing but people literally duplicating that music. And it's, it's, I find it quite bizarre, but uh, I don't know. Well, it's a bit like, Even, you know, yeah. I always found it bizarre. People would go to Madame Two Swords and I'd, and, uh. and I'd go, What are you going there for? And they go, Well, I could stand next to these wax statues of people that look like them. And I'm like, yeah, so my point, what are you going there for? It's like, right. yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> That's the way I feel about all those TV shows where they judge singers or oh. put the mask on them and you're supposed to guess who they are. It's like, oh, I've never watched one, so. Yeah, well, right. why do I care about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Anyway, guys, it's been it's been a treat. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, catch us next time on Raiders of the Lost Ark. Keep you know, let's keep keep plugging this this amazing instrument, and uh, let's keep following the the people that are making great music with it. Thanks for tuning in. Thank, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. See you guys. Take care. Have a good one.